Did you make your own beat? I killed her. All right. So let's carry on. Um, who, in what cities is there a Lamborghini dealer for you guys here? I'm sure there are a few. Okay, quite a few. Okay. The biggest, best thing about Lamborghini is not style, performance, anything. It's that their factory audio systems are absolutely terrible. They are the worst factory system I've ever heard, including their $6,000 cents and ohm speaker upgrade. So we had one of our clients who bought the big bad Aventador, and he played it for me, and I could not believe really how bad it was. A lot has to do with the acoustics of the car, but uh, more importantly is the, um, the speaker system is just brutal. Like really, really, really cheap. So we had the opportunity to work on this one, and I thought I'd show you a couple shots of this because the Prima amplifier range, we're gonna start covering off the types of clients that this can be sold to because it's very, very wide. So to get at the factory amplifier in the car, the, the dash comes off. We found a way where we don't have to take it all off now, but this was the first one. So the factory amplifier resides above the steering column way back in here. God. And it's a tiny little guy, um, and it's high level, or high level input into that. The car is most, because the CD changer is in behind you, and that CD changer is connected with most. Um, but at that point, um, Mobridge hadn't got the Lamborghini coating done yet and there's still a couple little glitches on it, but it is possible to do a Huracan or a Ventador with the most bust, and we'll get into that in a bit. So we took the factory bracket that the factory amplifier has put on and then made our own little base for the Prima 8.9. And I'm too Power close one. to it. Under right. Yeah, yes, right there. Yeah. So it bolts into the factory position where the factory amplifier was. <coughs> There's the connections there. That's looking up above the steering column. And then we use an Audison AP8 in the door, which fits absolutely perfectly. So we made a composite baffle, which bolts to the factory position. And then we put the DRC and the Escort 9500 CI controller into one piece. So this, is normally, if you order it with the smoker's package, this is an ashtray. This car was a non-smoker's package, so we just <coughs> cut it like it was the ashtray car, and then made this piece with the help of uh, Scott at Benchmark. We came up with this <coughs> design with the Aventador lines in here and everything. We put the VRC and radar controller in there, so that was the, the, the finished product. And this, this was the first car we did, and we had a little local called the Quarry Park and Polish uh, Auto Show, which is basically a bunch of rich guys that get together and show off all their cars. And they have tons of attendance to that. And I knew two other guys had just taken delivery of Ventadors. So we, first thing in the morning, I see these two guys walking around. They said, hey, come here for a sec. Got to show you something. Sat them down in this car, because we borrowed this from the guy. Uh, for the show and let this guy listen to it and this guy listen to it within 10 minutes we were twelve thousand dollars thank you my yeah. show's done <laughs> and the, all three of them are just ecstatic over the car and now that helped us get Lamborghini because all three of these guys went to ask our the president who already knows us from the fuel thing and said you got to listen to my car now and uh, both Ascar, the president of the company, and the service director for both dealerships listened to it. They looked at our work and said, holy shit, sounds great. And all three cars have the exact same system. Exactly. So, talk about efficiencies. So we found out what we could do to uh, take the installation time down. And then same speaker system. So we've saved the tuning file. And in, 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 zap done. All three cars sound exactly the same. Exactly the same. Why, when we spend all this money on tooling with Brian's parts and everything else for the uh, fitment of the product, now we're doing it on the acoustic side as well. And it's phenomenal. And repeatable. To the exact same standards. <coughs> so, what are these cars and what are we doing with them? Who can name this? 
BMW, Porsche, Porsche. Porsche. Audi, Audi. Mercedes. Mercedes, absolute. So I just took this this morning. So there are over 8,706 2005 Porsche vehicles for sale on Auto Trader today, for sale on Auto Trader nationally. So if there's 8,700 for sale, what would be the percentage of ones for sale? 10%, 15%? So are we safe to assume there's about 80,000 2005 Porsches on the road? Conservatively? <coughs> so two things here. For head unit guys, who still sell head units? Okay, who sells Mobridge? Okay, and who sells Audison? Pretty much better be everybody. <laughs> so 2005 era cars do not have Bluetooth, do not have iPod. So we can get them into a Mobridge box as step one. Step two, we can get them the uh, trim kit from ACV in Germany and we can put uh, a head unit in there and use the box from Nav TV. Who knows what box I'm referring to? Most hurt on MSN. Yep. Sorry? Most hurt. Right, most HUR replacement module. So that will give him all the connectivity. And we were talking uh, with Steve outside about uh, CarPlay. So for those cars that we can still put head units in, from a retailer perspective, I can tell you CarPlay is a godsend. Because it is the only, only feature in the past five, ten years that has made selling a head unit as simple as selling a great sounding speaker system because it's demonstrably better than any connectivity they've had in the car. So now this dude, who driving a 2008 Cayenne Turbo does not have a smartphone, does not want to wireless, wirelessly stream music, and is not into connectivity. How many? How about zero? Yeah. So Mobridge, for the simple guy, doesn't want any better connectivity, changing out a head unit with most HUR for the guy who wants connectivity. So uh, <coughs> I looked at this and said, okay, I don't know what the most HUR sells for here. 350. Three, no. Yeah. Oh, God. Cost. oh dealer cost. Retail. Yeah, the retail is 699. Sick, okay. So retail in Canada, before the dollar shit the bed, it's seven fifty, <laughs> and a Prima eight point nine is a thousand dollars. So we give a client an option. Hey, I know you want all this connectivity. Are you happy with the audio system? Yeah, the Bose system sounds pretty good. Great. Would you be in, interested at all in better sound quality? Yeah, no, I'm pretty happy with that. And okay, I'm about to make you unhappy. Here's what I'm going to tell you. For another. Uh, $300 worth, $250 worth of product and three hours of labor, I can take that car and make it sound totally different and you're gonna be over the moon for an additional $510. So we're giving you all the connectivity you want. That's, that's not even a question. Now we're gonna improve the sound quality because there's a distinct line in the sand. Because when a customer comes in, I want a new stereo. Okay, what is stereo to you? We look at it as two separate things, connectivity, entertainment, and productivity, we call it, and audio. So what is it that you're searching for? 90% of them are gonna say connectivity right. and entertainment, even though they don't know what a good sounding system sounds like. So with this, in a Cayenne, the amplifier, factory amplifier is in the back rear quarter. It's got a nice little shelf that it sits on, and a Prima 8.9 goes and sits right up in there. We use the factory power wire, we use the factory speaker wire, and we have a tune on it now that is absolutely amazing. And we use the preamp output to feed the little cheesy amplifier that drives the even cheesier subwoofer box factory in the car. But now, after spending hours and hours and hours of tuning those cars, we've got that factory Bose system sounding pretty good. Now, trust me, don't take away speaker sales, but let's talk about building a client because now they come and pick up the car, they're over the moon with CarPlay, you turn it on, tell them to put on their favorite song, and it's like, holy shit, did you put speakers in and everything? It's like, no, just the amplifier changes I told you, so you're happy. Now imagine what it would sound like if we put better speakers in. So you're priming them. Drug dealer, remember? Shh, shh, just a little bit at a time. In a 997, there's a bazillion 997s out there. In the front boot is the factory amplifier. You pull out the factory amplifier, 
You drop the AP 8.9 in, it's a three hour job that brings you in $1,210 of revenue in three hours. So who lives in car starter country? Okay. Why in your right mind would you want to sell a house? Because I do too, and I hate them. I refuse to even talk to my staff about them. That's Dave's department. Don't want to know about it, don't care. <laughs> Is that $1,210 for three hours of shop time it, that's awesome. There's very few remote starts that will do that. But it, of course, the other line we hear is it's not audio season, right? <laughs> Who in the frozen tundras heard that's not audio season? I didn't know it was like deer hunting where you have to get a license to sell audio during the winter. Like people don't listen to music in the winter or something. I don't know. But that's absolutely not true. It's a self fulfilling prophecy. I, when I was a rep in Prince Albert, Saskatchewan, we had a guy that transformed the whole store from car audio to in the summer to remote start and home audio in the winter. Literally transformed the whole store. Out with this inventory, in with new inventory because the store wasn't big enough to hold everything. I'm going, dude, you're just killing yourself. People will still buy car audio in the winter. So with Porsche, it is the easiest, best sounding, a Porsche 997 whether it's a Carrera or a C4 or a Turbo, the acoustics of that car are unbelievable. And you can make a system in there just rock. And if the guy's gonna go speakers, you can go with the AP8 again, because it's an eight inch in all these cars, uh, three way, um, and, or you can go Voce, or you can go higher, higher than that. I think you guys are Focal guys, or we somebody were. was? No were? More. Oh, okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you know, uh, Scotia just came out with Porsche dash kits about a month ago as well. So I haven't seen them. Are they buying them? Yeah, they the connect, connect to, to yeah, they the connect to, to importer for the U.S. So they're about half the price of Nav EV and Metra. Yeah. So we're buying them direct from ACV in Germany, um, which connects to and uh, ACV. So Scotia has about a hundred of each model in stock in Southern California and about fifty of each in Alabama. Awesome. So if they the well, Advanced Marketing is a Scotia distributor. Yeah. So they can they can so the, if they feel need it. The importance of this, I don't know if you guys know Connects to or whatever, but um, the finish, the cosmetic integration of the radio into the car is of utmost importance to these guys, especially if they're Porsche files. And there's lots of Porsche files out there where it's got to be factory. So on the 997, it's got that kind of dark gray. It's called anthracite uh, finish. And the ACV slash Connects 2 kit is that perfect anthracite uh, finish. And you slide an app radio for or whatever radio you're putting in there, it looks good. And then adding the AP 8.9, step two, changing the speakers, step three. So if you bring these kind of numbers up, and this isn't hard to get, go to autotrader.com, plug in your local dealer's zip code, take a 50 mile radius and say, here's how many of these cars are for sale right now in your neighborhood. Let's how, see how many are on the road. And every area in the US has a Porsche Club, PCA, Porsche Club of America. They have a newsletter. And if you do a CarPlay ad, let's not put a Prima 8.9 in the advertisement because it's not gonna make people line up at your door. Guarantee you won't. But if you put a CarPlay, get CarPlay for your 997 or Cayenne, I guarantee you, you'll get five because <coughs> you're appealing to the Porsche customer reading the Porsche newsletter who's part of the Porsche club. And when he puts that in his car, guess who he's going to tell? Every other club. Other Porsche owners at a Porsche club meeting or on the forums or wherever. And hey, I put the new CarPlay in, it's awesome, but I also did this thing called an AP 8.9 don't know what the hell it is, but sure sounds good. And then on and on and on and on, and there it goes. And then go to the Porsche dealer. Most mid to high population centers have a Porsche dealer. And this radio with now PCM3, PCM2, has about $4,500 to replace. And they have about a five or six year shelf life, and then the screen starts to go all wonky or the amplifier screws up. And when they both screw up at a roughly the same time, it's like cha-ching, it's awesome. 
And the Porsche dealer does not, at least our Porsche dealer, doesn't feel good about selling a $4,500 radio that they're only making a couple hundred dollars on, give the same old fashioned technology to the client. So if you get them to visit the dealer, if you guys are uh, head unit sales reps, go with them and explain the technology and explain the connectivity that they can get. So how many are on the road? Do you already know that? Over 50,000 2008 BMW vehicles. 50,000 for sale. 52,000 Mercedes vehicles. What do all these vehicles have in common that I'm talking about right now? Most bus. Most bus. 24,000 Audis. I didn't do Land Rover, didn't do Volvo, uh, but that even adds to it. And this, I just want to hug it because <coughs> it's, it's awesome. So this little box, 50 MI, I don't know if you guys covered it earlier on, but in the most system, who can tell me what most does in the car? Or who, let me just rephrase that. Who doesn't know what most is, honestly? Okay, so most, Brian, do you have any? There's a 50MI right there. In the box. You want an optic cable? Sorry? You want an optic? No, you don't have a most cable. Do you? There's one it's in there. <laughs> this is now Zed stock. <laughs> <laughs> So the best way to probe that is with a, a test light, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> well, you just want to make sure the light lights up. <laughs> so this is the cable in all those cars that we just mentioned. This cable runs from it's a think of it as a complete 360 round circle. So light comes out of the head unit, goes to the CD changer, DVD changer. Bluetooth box, amplifier, back to the head unit. That single cable, because it's just a return feed, uh, carries an audio signal, carries backup beepers, carries nav voice, carries volume control commands, carries bass and treble commands, carries everything. So if you want to change the head unit out in, well, this car or that car, what do you do? You don't, but the guy wants better sound. Okay, well, we'll put an amplifier in there. Oh, really? What amplifier are you gonna put in there? Does the amplifier have this on it? So what the bit DMI does with the AP 8.9 is this little guy, when you unplug this most bus, the car freaks out because it's not seeing that return loop back into the head unit. So what this does is plugs in here, click. You plug your computer in here, tell it it's a Porsche or BMW or whatever it is. And if you go to uh, electromedia.eu and under the bit section, you'll find bit DMI and there's a compatibility chart. And it's not just a spreadsheet. You actually click on the car and it will show you a picture of this radio. Does it look like this? Yes, it's compatible. And I can tell you with most of the most cars, I would probably say 80% of the cars now, including Lamborghini, Volvo, Land Rover, BMW, Porsche, Audi, Mercedes. I don't think I left any out. I could have. This replaces the factory amplifier. So when that most bus goes in here, the radio goes, oh, I'm happy. I see that factory amp. And then out of here is a fiber optic digital cable that plugs in here. So now we've got the amplifier all ready to go. Eight channels out, RCA out to a ninth channel for the subwoofer amp, the mono subwoofer amp. This box combined is US retail. Like 1700, about 1700. So 1750 in the Canadian marketplace, so $1,700. Do you know what a factory BMW X5 amplifier is? $1,700. $1,700. If you put this in the car, you will blow the client away with how much better it sounds. Not that he's looking for an audio upgrade. Write this down, Google B or BMW X5 amplifier problems. Oh, yeah. Because there's a channel 
On the hatchback or lift gate, when you open it up, water runs down, trickle, 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 follows a wiring harness that drops water directly on the factory amplifier. <laughs> Land Rover 2. Nice. Land Rover 2, yeah. yeah. If they're doing this, make sure the dealer's uh, correct for that too, so it doesn't drop yes. the water into you. Yeah. So now, not only are they being a solution for better sound, they know why it happened, and being a business development manager, you can take this information to the dealers, like, hey, X5s, let's go on the forum and see if there's anybody from our area that's on the internet right now bitching about his X5 amplifier being $1,700 to replace, and let's get in touch with them over about this. And we can tell them how to fix his problem so it won't happen again. And then X5 owner gets on the forum, holy shit, you should hear this thing, it sounds awesome. Not only did it fix it, but you should hear it. Yes. That's what he's gonna say. Yeah. So $1,700 replacement for all of those cars. Every single one of them that I put, well, not every single one. Let's call it 95%. And only getting better and better and better. Standard steering wheel volume controls work. All, everything remains intact, including parking sensor, beepers, nav voice, all that other stuff. And gentlemen, this combination is the only way, well, not the only way, but the best way to attack that. It's not like every manufacturer has this solution for $1,700. You truly have something that is unique, that is different, is demonstrably better in sound quality, demonstrably easier in installation, and has a protected dealer base and protected dealer margin. The bid DMI is the only thing in the market that can replace the factory amplifier. There is nothing else in the market that can do that. Well, Moebridge is... No. Yeah, just so you guys know, this is basically the chipset of the Moebridge DA1. And we'll go over all that tomorrow, but yeah. there, there's nothing else in the market that can replace the factory amplifier and give you this immediate solution. Because every other option is going speaker level into a processor, and how many times, it, how, how long would you have to think to figure out all the channels versus plug in the same program and you're done? And you save the customer and dealer two hours, three hours? I want to give you an example of this because there's one other audio company uh, that I respect a lot, and that's JL Audio. I think they're a fantastic company. And they just released a product last month ish called the Fix 82. And they're getting tons of press on Fix 82. So if we take a bit one and we take out the de-equalization and the signal summing part of a bit one, and then what they do on one step better than a bit one is they measure the input arrival because some of these high-end cars have factory time alignment built in. So when you're summing, signal summing with a bit one or anything like that, so let's, let's back up. All of the Audison processors de-equalize the factory signal. Who can tell me what other processor on the market does that other than the 360 from Rockford? The Helix? Doesn't de-equalize. Moscone doesn't de-equalize. So that's an advantage for us. So now the Fix 82, which is a, uh, I don't know how much it retails in the US for. $300. $300. $399. So $399, $400. Cost 172 Okay. And what's a bit one worth? $750 retail now, for Matt now. Okay, so three, four, four, four let's call it $400 cost. So 400 versus 200? Okay, let's just go 400, 200. It's much easier now. So the Fix 82 de-equalizes, which the bit one does. Fix 82 sums, which the bit one does. The Fix 82 corrects for factory time alignment, which the bit one doesn't do. The Fix 82 does not do anything other than correct the factory audio signal. There's no time alignment output settings on it. There's no equalization output settings on it. There's no crossover or anything built into it. That'll be in the tweak piece. And the tweak, from what I understand, is going to be the same price. So they really don't have a leg up on us. And it's antiquated. Taking analog signals, summing them, de-EQing them, is it's old compared to this. Especially when dealing with all those cars. 
And if you can tell the dealer, your dealers, why this is different and how they can not be afraid of these cars, because everything, BMW, batteries in the trunk, amplifiers in the trunk, most buses in the trunk, Audi, batteries in the trunk, most buses in the trunk, all the wiring's there. Three hours, two and a half hours, you can put this in and have the car sound way better than it ever did, and they can't shop it anywhere. There, there is no comparison. So you can have this, or they can go buy a Fix 82 and a Moscone processor and an amplifier. I guarantee you, it won't sound as good because this is all digital, all the way through to the amplifier. Every source. Every source, yeah. Okay? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Everybody got it? So then let's look at something like this. 2009 Toyota Camry. <clears throat> Pretty rare car. Not very many of them around. <laughs> this one has the JBL system in it, so factory CD player and JBL amplifier. Can we just throw an amplifier into this thing? No. The output of this deck, analog output, is fixed, so there's no volume control in here. And it's eight channels of output. It's a pair of components out, up front, with a pair of by-nines on the rear deck with the tweeter and woofer uh, active. So I had a client that came in who said the stereo was dead, he was sure it was the head unit, and wanted connectivity and coolness. So we put the new head unit in because he told us he knew it was his radio was dead, and guess what was the problem? Yeah. The amplifier. Newlyweds, Grandpa's Camry, his grandpa gave him his wedding present. Out comes the fancy, flashy head unit with all the connectivity, and I tell them, instead of the $1,000 for the edge unit, I'm gonna sell them a $1,000 amplifier. Not the happiest day for the kid's life, because he wanted all this connectivity, but he wanted sound more than anything. Sold me APA.9 underneath the passenger seat with a DRC, because now he has volume control, and away we go. Done. Couldn't have done it without the APA.9 and the DRC, because I needed a volume control as well. Guess what happened two months after that? Back for the edge unit sale and subwoofer after that. And there's only 2,000, 2009 Camrys for sale, and probably another 100 million of them on the road still. And electronic brake. <laughs> yeah, funny no. thing, huh? So, are you starting to see the potential for this thing from an absolute great audio processor and amplifier? to a fix-all, to an add-on sale, and it fits anywhere, including Harley's. And I don't know if you tried this yet, but we did a, a Harley with bag speakers and front bag speakers and the lower speakers with this uh, time-aligned. Kind of pretty cool. It was like wearing a pair of headphones, is the way I can explain it to you. Instead of regular, just loud, it was like, it was sound coming from out here. It was just wild to listen to. Yes. Yeah. So the the other thing that we're working on this little preset dial right here, um, you can set for different tuning curves, if you will. And the other neat thing that's happening, uh, so with Expediter Work, you can just repetitively have this set. You don't even have to worry about connecting a computer to it. The other nice thing is we're building sound packs. Did your guys' six no, come in yet? No, not yet. Haven't got it yet? Uh, no, we got the first one. That's for CES. For CES, but we got it. Yeah, this so Golf 6. So we packaged this amplifier with Prima speakers for the front, mid-range tweeter, uh, all the factory wiring harnesses, um, speaker, speaker adapters. ring adapters, <laughs> subwoofer, everything for its cost on it, you know? Did you figure it out yet? It's $1,200 Canadian uh, cost. And it basically, I don't know what stealth boxes are worth here, but uh, cost on a stealth box in Canada is like between five and 700 bucks just for the box. And you're getting the whole system for $1,200. That's for Golf 6. Golf 7 will be introduced shortly, and then we're gonna keep adding to that program. So you'll have 
true uh, expediter type work. Now you guys can work with your dealers and create your own sound pack. It's again, Porsche 997 and Cayenne, those cars are just like changing a Honda, or putting a radio in a Honda Civic in the 80s, just putting the knobs on. That's what it's like in our shops, like bang. It's a Porsche production facility, it's freaking awesome. And the till rings, because with that amplifier and head unit uh, and labor, it's a $4,000 ticket in a day. It's, it's awesome. That's bringing profitability back to an industry that's suffering from that. Yet Steve was saying outside, he's beating on his guys to try and understand this. That's why I suggest breaking out the math and say, what else can you do in your day that's gonna bring you $4,000 in revenue? And a customer that is just over the moon with the performance of the car. Any questions with that at all? So in understanding, going back to what Brian was talking about and I was talking about earlier, getting a snapshot in your head of what's going on with the dealer. And this is, again, this isn't the only way to do it. I'm just saying that if I was back on the road knowing what I know about today's retail up till today, this is what I would do. I go in and evaluate the product lines in the store, determine which of your product line fits or what part of the Audison line fits, evaluate how much of the product volume you can take. So how do we find out what that product volume is? That whole math chart, right? How many techs? One third, two third. So you can figure out roughly how much product is going to be. Then you can devise a plan to get that volume, merchandising, etc. Call Jason. Call who? Jason. Who's making the decisions on all that stuff? Okay. So once you say, I've got dealer X. He's got four techs, he's doing probably about one to 1.5 million a year. These are the product lines he's got. This is the product line I wanna replace or this is what I wanna to add to his business. This is how I wanna attack that. This is my plan to attack that. Present that plan to management for approval. Present that plan in a multimedia format to the dealer. Not on a piece of paper, not on a professional visit as I love to call it. I, I'll tell you a little story because this just happened last week. I got a call from the sales manager of a distributor in Canada. We haven't seen a rep for one of these brands in <coughs> since last CES. And he calls me and I said, well, I didn't know about this and I didn't know about that. And he said, well, what about your rep? I haven't seen him. Oh, well, yeah, he said you guys are kind of hard to do business with because he can't come in. And I said, can't drop in? No, because we're flying. I respect his time too much to just have him wait for an hour because I might be with a client or I might be doing business planning or whatever I'm doing. If he sets up a meeting with us and books the time, I'll give him all the time in the world. I'll stay till 10 o'clock at night as long as there's something that's gonna be constructively put together. So once that plan, <coughs> I called last chance for a first impression. So the meeting, you got all your data. You can say, I'm assuming you do about X amount to X amount. This is the product you're doing now. This is our product. This is the difference in value, revenue. This is the difference in profit dollars. This is how much profit it's gonna to bring to you at the end of the year. This is what we're gonna do for you. <coughs> Did that make sense? So now the dealer's like, holy shit, this guy knows about my business probably more than I do today. <laughs> okay, and explain the product and uh, business culture through that multimedia presentation. <coughs> We've got all these cool videos that you're seeing. You can do the product presentations that way. Do the, you know, the one, one tech, two tech, three tech kind of deal. Create an electronic presentation of your business plan with that store. Get his logo, create a nice professional looking folder. Have a printed copy of that that you can hand to him at the meeting and other people attending the meeting. And book another meeting for a product presentation with the key advisors and technicians. Don't be in a rush to close it that day. Because if you look at it, if you look pressured or they feel they're being pressured, then they think it's a short term solution. 
but if you lay it out like this, and again, guys, this is coming from a perspective of dealing with this every day, and I can tell you nobody is doing this. Not one single person in eight years has come to me with this kind of plan. And if they did, and it made sense, and they were correct, how can you say no? If they're showing you that you're gonna make more money, they're showing you it's a better product, it's a product that's got a great reputation in the worldwide market, you're showing them how you can make more money with it, and how they're gonna be protected with it, and this is what you're gonna do for them, and it, it becomes a no-brainer decision, how can they say no? Book another meeting for the product presentation where you get really techy on product. Notice we're not really talking about product here. We're just gonna go in, talk about the Porsche stuff, talk about all the ways the Prima can interface. And if the client wants to go higher end than Prima, we have Voce. If he wants to go higher end than Voce, we've got Thesis. All with the same story. The full digital technology all the way through the line. And use your demonstration tools. I don't know what's happening with those cases out there other than Jason did an awesome job on there. But you show up at a product presentation with that case and bit tune. Holy, excuse the language, but holy fuck, Batman, that's cool. What other company is going to have those tools, never mind the tools, but the product that can do this kind of stuff? Nobody. It doesn't exist. So the relationship, show your passion, believe in everything you do, this is just normal stuff, don't cut corners. Be a business advisor, that's the biggest thing I wish I had in vendor relationships. It is so unprofessional right now that it's, it's crazy. And the worst thing is not be a professional visitor. It's kind of a funny little line, but it's true. Because now, if a, a rep, because I will call it a rep, for guys that just drop in with donuts and coffee for the guys. And what do I see at that point? Time waster. It's an hour. So if he's there for an hour, times four techs is how many labor dollars? 280, right. $560 worth of product. That just costed me $1,200 in revenue. What are you doing for me to replace that $1,200 in revenue? If it's after hours and you want to go out for lunch, fuck, I'll even buy you dinner. If you're going to tell me how you can make the business better. So if you think about it in that strain, and, and some stores, I don't have the luxury. Some stores, the buyer, manager, owner can give you that time during the day. That, that's wonderful. Um, or else we, it'd be a shitty job if you had to be there every night. But I'm just saying, understanding how the store works will help him understand what you're doing. Follow up and follow through on everything. That's pretty self-explanatory. Create the electromedia culture in every store you choose to work with. Because if they don't have the culture or the mindset to gravitate towards this, uh, in our distribution business, we did three massive trainings this year <coughs> where we brought them in, paid for the dealer's trip to our facility, trained the shit out of them, and we had probably 50 to 60% of dealers that latched onto it, got it, and went and the other guys just went like this, or went like this, because they realized, hey, this is way over my head. So don't be in a rush to, it's not the amount of dealers, it's the throughput of each dealer that's important. So uh, our average top five dealers are doing, single store retailers are doing about 40 to 50 a year to date. So that, that's awesome, and that's not in huge markets. And every visit should be educational and or rewarding. So in each and every visit, greet everyone at the store, On at least with our store, plan visit, check displays, clean in phase, gains. And again, this has never happened, not this anyways, in over eight years since we've had the store. Merchandise all areas of the store. Not just your stuff, but say, hey, Bob, can I just adjust this a little bit? I think I just saw, I was at another store and I saw how they merchandised this, it was pretty cool. He's been real successful with it. Can I, change that up for you, but Andy, that's not even your product line. It's like, yeah, I know, but trust me, the guy's doing really well with it. Share product knowledge on new products, share marketing ideas and new technologies. This is just basic shit. Discuss sales and product categories, play the hot new track. That's the most important thing, and I know Steve is a big music guy and does that all the time. That's, that's what gets me going. And again, this hasn't happened in eight years. 
this hasn't happened in eight years, this hasn't happened in eight years, this has happened a little bit, this has never happened, this has never happened, and maybe they get to 80% of our people. Because every person in the store is as valuable as the next guy. So if you blow off, you just walk by a dude without even acknowledging him, there's no respect in, in that. So business is not about doing the deal, it's having great engineering, being in great products, uh, followed through with great customer service. And I know these guys, Electro Media USA, we, uh, to give you a little history on that, we started out between Canada and US at about $400,000 in sales when we started this plan. And you know that some of your territories are doing that now. So my congratulations to your team for making that happen. It's good to see something that we started with a vision grow, 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 grow. So uh, even though I'm not getting paid on you guys anymore, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel proud anyways. So Rob's famous line, no business, no bit. And I think this is probably the most important thing. The Audison line is not the bit one, bit 10. And hopefully you can see from the product mix, it's the philosophy from top to bottom. So if a guy just wants to buy a bit and he thinks he's an Audison dealer, no business, no bit. It's not gonna be advantageous to your time. And your time is worth as much or more than their time. So that's it, I'm done. Mm.